Okay, so here I got an embroidery file and I got it open as an uh, in my editor and that is a, a stitch file and I do not have a vector file from it so now in order to create a vector for it so that we can resize it to whatever size we want uh, so what I'm gonna do is bring it into uh, Inkscape and and so here we have it this is the file in Inkscape and now we're gonna see to vectorize this this may not work on all your designs but it is something where you can play with and and try it and see how it goes so here we have what I did is uh, uh, there were some trim commands so and I went and ungrouped it and I took all the trim commands and I put them all in in a separate layer so just for visibility wise uh, I put them in a separate layer and turn off the visibility so now we have this design and now we want to go and make changes to it or completely make it into a vector so there are different options for certain things uh, as we see here this is a stem and that is a satin stitch so what we can do there is if we want to create a satin line right away again then what we can do is we go to the Bezier tool and by having snapping turned on so that is this icon uh, it is a possibility that you have some of these icons on this side that depends on how you have things set up so then what you can do is uh, zoom in fairly close but since snapping is turned on uh, it snaps quite easy to the the stitch points so then what we do is we start here on the bottom on the stitch point and we can make quite often make a click and we will be following the it will snap to the stitch points and when we are at this end and we double click and on my Bezier tool I had a fill so I'll uh, have to uh, change the, the fill here for a moment and I can turn the line width down so there we have the first rail already and then I can go with the Bezier tool along this side and keep clicking and it will snap to the nearest node and there is a corner here we're getting a little bit of a of a curve and there is my second one then we can go and create the the rails or the the rungs for a stitch direction and we can have a look see how the stitch direction is underneath and there you can see because the snapping was turned on that one did not line up properly so make sure that you uh, watch out for that so we'll just have to grab it here for a moment and change the stitch direction and then all these uh, paths let's see shift so I'll select them in the in the order in the object panel here and then go path combine 
and then that pa oh I don't want that edit undo drag the curve want to select it and there you can see there we have created the satin line for this stem okay that is one part then there is uh, another option on how it can be done also and so we'll go to this leaf and what what I first did also uh, like to make you aware yet I ungrouped everything so everything is uh, all in layer one and that was just for convenience wise because otherwise it was a I find it a kind of pain to work uh, with all the objects in the groups so then I will go and take this one leaf out of the way for a moment uh, so that it becomes a little easier to view on on the process I am doing and I will go and make a duplicate and I'll move over the duplicate okay so the duplicate is here I'll give that a different color and change the stroke color on it then what I will do is I up the stroke width till everything is basically enclosed so like Oh, uh, if I change it down now you can see we having here uh, little gaps so I will just go and up it a little more till those uh, gaps are closed up then what I will go and do is go path stroke to path and then go path union if I then go to the node select now you can see there is no nodes on on the inside anymore only along the outside but we get a lot of jagged edges so then what we can do is we can go path we can go simplify path simplify do that a few times and then you can see uh, they have become curves if you want to have a further adjustment there that can also be done and we can go and grab a bunch of nodes and we can go and delete them and then we can just make a few minor adjustments on some of the of the nodes in order and there delete that one and delete that one and it may depend on how your uh, Inkscape is responding to deleting of of nodes, and I will show you. You can there is a setting in the preferences, so I double click here on the on the node select, and what can happen is uh, that this one deleting nodes preserve the shape. If that one is not selected, then you will get I will show you that here for a moment uh, if I'm grabbing here a few nodes and I will delete those and there you can see the the curve is is not there anymore that got now it's making pretty well a straight line from the one point to the next one so now I go and undo this one for a moment go back to my preferences and check mark deleting notes preserve the shape 
and now I close out of preferences again and now I will go and delete a few of these nodes and there you can see the curve stayed similar to what it what uh, the original shape was and sometimes we may have to make minor adjustments okay so now I have that one created and now I will go and select I should bring that one up for a moment till it's on uh, on top of the one I created okay there we are on top and now you can see I'm moving that one in place and if I would give that a different color I guess um, stroke and there you can see that the shape I created by uh, changing the the line width and change the line to the path and then the path combine that that shape is awful close to the original stitch design and like I say it may not work for everything but we can do uh, one more here for a second and I will go and take this shape and we'll do exactly the same thing for a moment I'll uh, I'll make a duplicate and I'm only making the duplicate just for this video so that we can see exactly what's uh, what's going on and I'll give that one a blue stroke for a moment so then I up the stroke width and there you can see all the the lines have uh, solidified the the inside part be getting jagged edges on the uh, on the sides but that that will be straightened out the same way again so once we have that we go path stroke to path path union and if we then go to the node select there you can see again we are having all the nodes around the outside then we can go again path uh, here simplify and path simplify and there you can see we having pretty smooth edges already so if you still want to make adjustments uh, by deleting some nodes just select them and delete them and you can drag the curves and all that so now we're grabbing this one or I have to use the select tool and I'll have to move it up for a moment till I'm on top of the get on top of the blue okay there we are so now I'll drag that one over top and there you can see how close of a match that becomes all the edges they are pretty well where the stitch points were from from the original so if you want to want to create a vector from an original uh, design then I would suggest give this a try and once you have all these vectors then uh, then you can go and or you can completely work right away with with the original design here in the center uh, I want to point that out for a moment yet uh, these are I'll give them uh, different different colors here for a moment because here 
on the original design. There are multi multi parts. So then now it is easier to visualize on where you want to be because these parts they are all satin stitches. You could create it as uh, as a fill too again as fill areas. So there is different ways you can work with these. Uh, you can start using the Bezier tool and have the snapping turned on and create your your rails this way and then enter and do the same here you have to watch that uh, that a snapping that it snaps to the proper object underneath and there we go enter and so there we have the two rails already and then all what we need to do is create the as you can see now with creating the rungs we have to be careful with the snapping and we create a rung there and a rung there and then the last four the shift key down select all four of them and path uh, combine so there we have and then select it I'll drag it as you can see that there I dragged uh, the original stitches out of the way I want to select the satin and move it out of the way for a moment and there we have created the satin part for for that little piece of the design okay I hope this is gonna be helpful to you and once you have all those pieces together then you can go and resize it and what you can do too is uh, create first a duplicate of your original design and keep it keep it out of the way and once you have all the all your objects uh, created then you can go and line them up on top and make sure that everything is in the right place so there's there's many options uh, how you can how you can play with it uh, for the running stitch uh, that might be a little more difficult to create a vector from the running stitch but uh, I haven't I haven't tried that yet but this is with the filled shapes and some of the satin stitches on how you can create it okay have fun and keep creating